All right, here we go, guys. Measurement of rotation. We're going to go slow. It's not that bad. It's actually pretty simple. So it says uh, definition of standard position of an angle. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about some angle, right? Uh, an angle and standard position in Cartesian coordinate system. So that just means in the XY coordinate system, its vertex is at the origin. Uh, its initial side is along the positive horizontal axis. So, and it is measured counterclockwise from positive horizontal axis. The angle measure is positive. And clockwise from the positive horizontal axis, the angle measure is negative. What does all that mean? It just means this. I have an axis. I always start at the origin. And if I have a ray that's, uh, that you move counterclockwise, like so, so that angle right there, that is a positive. I'm going to say that's like a 50 degrees. And if I count negative, so here is the same x and y axis. Here's my ray started from the origin, and if I go like that, if I count from the positive x axis and I go downward like that, that is going to be a negative 50 degrees. Notice the degree symbol. And then I ask you a question. I go, all right, Cardinals, in one revolution, how many radians are there? And I guess the first question I should ask is, in one revolution, how many degrees are there? Not everyone at the same time. How many degrees are in one revolution? You know this. Yeah, 360 degrees. Make sure to put the little degree symbol on the upper right-hand corner. Uh, I'm not a history buff. I may be wrong. Maybe the YouTube world will tell me how wrong I am. Well, someone will put it in the comments. But I believe the 360 degree concept came from the Babylonians. And I think uh, when the Babylonians were doing this, I don't know if they thought that the sun revolved around Earth uh, or whatnot, or maybe they already knew that the Earth revolved around the sun, but they thought that it revolved, you know, 360 days or something like that. And that's how they, died. That's how they did one revolution is 360. What's up? I think I've said it before, because uh, I like I like for you guys to know like where stuff comes from. So this is not just some magic number that, like oh humans just chose 360. Like no, it's not like that. Like it came from somewhere. Oh, everything comes from somewhere, guys. Everything, every. And here comes the question: Was math invented, or was it has it always been in part of the universe? Did we invent math? No, math was not invented. It's already part of the universe. It was discovered. It was discovered, right? Like you look into the universe and you see all these beautiful spirals of the galaxies. All of that can be modeled. He didn't invent algebra. He discovered algebra. All right. Sorry. Let's continue with this message here, guys. I don't want to go on a tangent. Ah, a tangent. All right. So here we go. So how many radians are in one revolution? Well, if you remember when you were in geometry, you did something called the circumference of a circle. Circumference is kind of like perimeter. Uh, circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times r, where r is the radius. And that really actually is kind of is like what a radian is. Uh, um, a radian is literally like a radius, but it's unitless. It's just like the difference between meters and feet, you know, like feet is a feet, meter is a meter. It's still a way to measure distance. So a radian, a radian, without not saying radius, a radian is a way to measure rotation. Cool? So we're going to say that one revolution is 2 pi. Usually you don't put the radian on it, but I'm going to go ahead and spell it out for you. 2 pi radians. And I know it's looking kind of squiggly. Uh, I don't know. My laptop does that from time, time to, from time to time. That R looks squiggly. There you go. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, two pi radians. So what am I trying to say? It's a measure of rotation, guys. So if I have a circle, I'm looking for a circle. Okay, I see a circle here. If this guy rotates one time, one whole revolution, it just did two. Well, actually, that's only one. So if I go measurement of rotation. I'm not talking about the distance covered. Obviously, the larger the circle, 
So now we know. Uh, let's go ahead and label our axis just for references. So if I have an axis here and I'm saying that here's zero degrees and if you keep going counterclockwise, this is, oh, let me put a degree symbol. Then this uh, positive y axis is going to be 90 degrees, right? And then if I go to the negative x axis here, that's going to be 180 degrees, right? Because it goes by 90. And then this is going to be 270 degrees. And then once I do a full revolution, that is 360 degrees. Did I confuse anyone there, guys? Okay. Same thing for radians. So let's let's do a radian one now, since I said that one revolution is two pi radians. So here we go. If this is zero radians, notice I didn't put a degree symbol. And then if I do a whole revolution, I do two pi radians. So there it is. If I did a whole revolution, <laughs> excuse me, that's two pi radians. I don't know why the squiggly is coming out. There we go. Oh, I can't make. It's a software. Something's happening with it. All right. If I do half a revolution, that is pi radians. Put a pi there on the on the negative x-axis. So then that means at 90 degrees, this must be pi over 2. You could also say half a pi. And then at 270 degrees, that must be... 3 pi over 2. Now it's not doing that squiggly thing anymore. So there it is. There's my grid. How do you feel? Not bad, right? Pretty simple. Okay. Let's keep going. And then maybe I should have started with degrees first because you guys are, are, are you guys feel better with degrees, but that's fine. Two angles in standard position are co-terminal if and only if the radian measure differs by a multiple of 2 pi. That is, phi and theta are co-terminals if and only if Phi, that's how you say phi, by the way. You can also say phi, P-H-I. Phi equals theta plus minus 2 pi n, where n stands for an integer. Why this formula, though? What about in degrees? Okay. Did all that, did all that, any of that make sense? It's okay to say no. No? Okay. So let's say I have, let's talk about degrees, and then we'll talk about a formula. So I have a array, and I'm going to exaggerate this ray. I have a ray at, I'm going to say I have a ray at 30 degrees. Can you give me another angle that is co-terminal to 30 degrees? So here's the other angle. Ready? I'm going to do a whole revolution. A whole revolution is how many degrees? 360. And I'm going to add 30 to it. That in green is... 390 degrees. 390 degrees is co-terminal to 30 degrees. Chavez, why? Because it creates the same ray. Do you guys see that? It's the same ray, right? So, if I had a formula for degrees, this is the radian ones, it would look like this. Phi equals theta plus minus, and instead of writing 2 pi, I'm going to write... 360, put a degree symbol, and put an n, where n is an integer. And that, all those angles will be coterminal to each other. Not just the positive ones, but also the negative ones. Like if I were to subtract uh, 360 from 30. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. In case you're wondering, Chavez, what are you talking about? Well, I could have done this. I could have gone, uh, let me put it in the blue. I could have gone like this, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and then bam, that in blue. What is that? Well, well, I'm 30 degrees away from a whole revolution, so it must be negative, oh, negative 330 degrees. And it's negative because I went clockwise. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. If you go clockwise from the x-axis, it's negative. Chavez, I don't remember you ever reading that. It's right here, third bullet. It is measured counterclockwise from the positive horizontal axis if the angle measure is positive, and clockwise from the positive horizontal axis if the angle measure is negative. Oh, yeah, look. Look how much you learned just by reading a bullet. Okay. Cool or not cool? All these are coterminal. 
300 negative 330 390 they're all cold terminal to what to the if you want to call it the original to the 30 degrees or you can also say 30 degrees is cold terminal to 390 390 is cold terminal to negative 330 they're all related they all make the same ring c awesome so why this formula well the formula because one revolution is 360 degrees so why this formula for radians because one revolution is two pi radians so every time you add two pi you're in the same location does that make sense guys or no yeah see look how math is just beautiful everything just makes sense cool or not cool all right let's keep going you're going to be using this a lot in physics you guys the seniors probably already have seen this when you're reference when you're like calculating forces and x direction y direction you'll see what i'm talking about it says the reference angle of an angle in standard position is the positive, underline this word, positive acute angle between the horizontal axis and the terminal side. Terminal side just means where it terminates, like where I, where I stop. So what does that mean? If I'm in quadrant one, and I'll, I'll show them all. If I'm in quadrant one, this angle here, not only is it your original, it's also your reference. Quadrant one is the only one because everything in quadrant one is a positive acute angle. If you're in quadrant two, I'm, I'm exaggerating quadrant two. Here's my ray. This is the angle, but that's not your reference angle. The reference angle is this guy, always with respect to the x-axis. Yeah, the subscript R. If you're in quadrant three, oh, just a ray. This is the angle, and the reference angle is this one right here in green. And if you're in quadrant four, I have some angle. That is this angle, but the reference angle is this guy. How are we feeling, guys? Not bad, right? Okay. Here we go. We're going to start. Very basic. It just says sketch. Sketch these angles. 71, 133, 254, and 317 degrees. They're all in degrees. In standard position, that means they want to see the ray and calculate the measure of each reference angle. Okay, here we go. 71 degrees, what quadrant am I in? One, two, three, or four? Do you know our quadrants? Yeah, in case we don't know our quadrants, guys. One, two, three, four. Do not put number, do not put numeric numbers. Number one, number two, number three, number four. I have seen teachers do that. In the math world, it is understood, Roman numerals, label your quadrants. All right, here we go. Someone find out why. Find out why Roman numerals label the quadrants and why not numeric. <laughs> find the history. Not right now, but later on. Like, find out, like, why is that the norm? All right, 71 degrees. Probably closer to the y-axis and the x-axis. It does not have to be perfect. As long as you tell me that you're in quadrant one, there's quadrant one. 71 degrees is this guy. That's theta equals 71 degrees. And my reference angle is also 71 degrees. So on the bottom, I'm just going to put theta r is 71. Done. Are we okay? 133 degrees. What quadrant is that in? Two. And I know that because the positive y-axis is a 90 degree mark. And the negative x-axis is the 180, so 133 is between 90 and 180, so quadrant 2. Exaggerate quadrant 2. Chavez, how do you exaggerate quadrant 2? Like this, you draw a vertical line, you draw a horizontal line, and there it is, quadrant 2 is exaggerated. And then you just go to the origin, put a point. It doesn't have to be perfect, just draw a ray in quadrant 2. This is your 133 degrees. This is your reference angle. 
How do I calculate the reference angle? Let's see, theta r. If I would have gone all the way to the x-axis, the negative x-axis, that would have been 180 degrees. So I go 180, and I'm going to subtract the 133 degrees. 33, 43, 53, 63, 73. So it looks like it's 47 degrees. I make mistakes? Let me know if I make mistakes. 33, 43, 53, 63, 73. Yeah, that's correct. Are we feeling okay, guys? All right, here we go. Let's do the 254. What quadrant? Third quadrant. So I'm going to exaggerate quadrant three. There it is. I'm going to draw a ray. I'm going to say 254 is like right there. So here is my 254. That is theta equals 254. And here's my reference. Theta r. Theta r equals, because I'm in quadrant 3, I take that 254, and I'm going to subtract 180. Chavez, why are you subtracting 180 this time? Well, it's always with respect to the x-axis. So it's either 180 or 360 or something like that, you know? So 254 minus 180, let's say 54, 64, 74. Nope, nope, 54, 80 to 20. Yeah, 74, 74. My bad, guys. Sorry. 74 degrees. If you have a calculator, maybe you'll be faster than me. Yay or nay? Last one. 317 degrees. Exaggerate quadrant four. There it is. Quadrant four is exaggerated. I'm going to draw a ray. That ray is 317 degrees. So it's going to go like that. Theta equals 317 degrees. I'm going to put a reference. Theta R. I am almost a full revolution. That blue's in the way there, so I'm going to write 360 minus 317. Let's see, 17, 27, 37, 47, 57. It looks like it's 43. Put a degree symbol. How do you feel? Not bad, right? Okay. Here we go. Example 2 says, find an angle in each quadrant with a common reference angle with 204 degrees. You're actually going to see this tomorrow on delta, but let's do it today, and that way tomorrow you just reference this. Uh, so they want, what do they want? So let's do this one first. Find an angle in each quadrant with a common reference. So they want to see this reference. So 204 degrees, what quadrant am I in? What quadrant? Third quadrant. So 204 degrees, something like that. And this is actually 204. Theta equals 204 degrees. And here's the reference, this guy. So that guy is, let's see, 204 degrees minus 180 degrees. Difference between 180 and 200 is 20, and then add another 4. So 24 degrees. So I want to see a reference angle of 24 degrees in each quadrant. So here's quadrant 1. 24 degrees. So obviously theta is 24 degrees. Here's quadrant 2. This is 24 degrees. So I'm going to have to, bless you, I'm going to have to subtract from 180 to get the, the theta. Here's quadrant 3. Well, quadrant 3 is given. Given. And here's quadrant 4. 24 degrees. I guess I should put theta r equals that. All right. They want to know, find an angle in each quadrant. Okay, each quadrant. Here we go. Quadrant 1. The angle has to be 24 degrees, the theta, the original, this angle. Theta, uh, quadrant 2. Let's see. What angle is this right here in quadrant 2? Well, i got to go 180 minus 24 so 180 70 60 156 quadrant 3 was given 204 degrees i'm gonna put given and quadrant 4 is 360 minus 24 for this for this angle there 
360 minus 24. 60, 50, 40, 136 degrees. How do we feel? Did we understand that question? So they gave us a, they, they wanted us to find our reference angle at 204. We found that reference angle and they're like, give me the reference angle in every quadrant and give me the angle that creates that reference. That's what they want. Cool. All right, guys, let's go to the next one. Oh, I like this one. Take out a calculator. You're going to need one. There's calculators back there, guys. Go ahead and take, take the fancy ones first and then grab the older ones. For Christmas, guys, if you can, I would only ask for one thing. Not for me, but for you. Um, a calculator would be an awesome Christmas gift, I think. I think. So you, you don't need to purchase a calculator, but it would be so cool if you could have a calculator in your back pocket. And I know you technically do with a phone, but I'm talking about like a real calculator. Like, it, wouldn't it be cool if you just, like imagine that calculator, that slim calculator in your pocket at all times. Yeah, bring it. Bring it. All right, here we go. Sketch an angle 4,897 degrees in standard position and calculate the measure of the reference angle. Okay, I have seen, and I've actually seen it successful. I have seen kids do this. They go, okay, let me see. 360, 720, and they keep going until they find where to stop, and they're like, Zhoo. I've seen it, and they've done it right. But doesn't that sound like a lot of work? It's a lot of work. Don't do that. I mean, you can if you want, but don't. So because you know that 360 degrees is in one revolution, you're going to go 48, 97 degrees. You're going to divide it by 360 degrees. And that's going to tell you how many revolutions it does. So check it out. Yeah. 48, 97 divided by 360. Now let's see if you guys understand numbers. You see that 13.602777878? 13.602777878. It probably goes 7 forever. And that 8 is just rounding up because of the 7 that's right next to it. All right, let's see if we understand. That 13 right here, guys, means that I did 13 revolutions. What does that 0.602777778 mean? What does it mean? I haven't heard a good answer. Okay, let me say it loud and proud. I'm looking for a specific word. And what did you say, Lechuga? The completion. That's what I was looking for. Guys, this means it does 60.277778% of a revolution. That's what it means. That's all, that's all it means. So here's what you do. So you always want to make sure they use the entire... You have a calculator, so use all the digits here. I would just take out that 13 by just going minus 13. See, and then I have this. And then I would go that times a revolution. That times 360. So that's how I look at 217 degrees. So that means... So I take that 60 point... Well, I take uh, the 360 and I multiply by 0 0.602, 77778. And I get 200 and, was it 217? I already forgot. 217. 217, put a degree symbol. 
And then I'm just going to do my grid. 217 degrees is in what quadrant? Oh, man. Yeah, the third quadrant, guys. So I'll just exaggerate the third quadrant. Here's my 217. Ooh. Theta equals 217. If you want to write theta equals 4897, I guess you could. But if I just start from there to there, that's 217. Uh, that's the measure of your angle. But the reference angle is this one in blue, theta r. So theta r is equal to 217 minus 180. So that is, let's see, 20, 30, is it 37 degrees? And there it is. A caution, a warning. If you were to just look at this and go 0 0.602, if you were to go 360, oh, I understand, that's a percentage, times 0 0.602, notice that you do not get an integer. It is not 216.72, it's at 217 degrees. Are we in the clear? So just be cautious. Now, I just want to make sure that you, that you guys understand number theory. What if your friend tells you, I don't know, maybe you have a weird friend. What if your friend tells you, hey, I'll be at your house in 1.2 hours. What does she mean, or he? What does that 1.2 hours mean? It means one hour, and 0.2 means 20% of an hour, right? 0.2 times 60, well, hopefully you can, well, it doesn't matter. 0.2 times 60, what's that, 12 minutes? So that means one hour and 12 minutes. And if you understand that, then there's nothing that will, you will do everything perfectly fine when it comes to numbers and chemistry. Did you guys already take chem? Do you guys remember doing uh, stoichiometry? Do you guys remember Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? And then you converted that to like molarity yeah, look, and nothing's going to trip you up. Like, oh, what's the density? And what's the blah, blah, blah? You, you just do your calculations. Okay, here we go. This one now wants you to convert these radians into degrees. Don't worry, guys, we're almost done. So we know, what do we know? We know that one revolution is 360 degrees. We know that one revolution is also 2 pi radians. That we know. Cool or not cool? You can use that to convert, but there's an even better number. If 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, that means 180 degrees equals how many radians? Yeah. Uh, what did you say? Just pi? Yeah, pi radians. This is what you're going to use. You can actually use so many different ones for convergence, but this is the, 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 the one that you would like to use. You can use 90 degrees as pi over 2, but this one's the one that's nice. So you just do this. You go pi over 3 radians, and if I want to convert to degrees, you just go times 180 degrees over pi radians. The pi's cancel out. 3 goes into 18 6 times, so that means 3 goes into 180 60 times. So pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Do you guys see how we did it? All right, do the next one. 2 pi over 3 times 180 degrees over pi. Pi's cancel out. You can just do 2 thirds times 180, or 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12, so that must be 120. You can use a calculator. There's no shame. You can use your calculator, guys. 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 times... 180 degree over pi. I again do the whole thing again. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 4, 6, 12, 24. So this must be 240 degrees. 5 pi over 3 times 180 degree over pi. 3 goes into 18 6 times, 6 times 5, so that has to be 300 degrees. And then the last one, because there's one more, ah, 11 pi over 6 times 180 over pi. 
6 goes into 18 three times. And 3 times 11 is 33, just at the 0. 330 degrees. If you don't want to do mental math, it's okay. Let me show you with a calculator with the last one. You could just do this. You can just go... I like to use the fraction feature, guys. I, I could just go 11 pi over 6 like this, so. And then I could just go times. And then you can just use the fraction feature again. You could put a pi up there. You can put a 180 down here. And you'll get that number. See? Oh, this is embarrassing. What did I do wrong? I put the pi on the top and the 180 in the bottom. And no one fixed me. You just let me fail. You want to see me fail, huh? Man, guys, we got a whole bunch of haters. Posers. Posers. You just want to see me fail. I'm kidding, guys. But no one fixed me. I just kept going, and you guys were just like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> there it is, 3.30. I didn't do that on purpose. It was honestly 100% an accident. I was just going through the motions, and then I noticed that it didn't get by 3.30, and I'm like, what happened? And then I looked. The pies have to cancel out. The pies have to cancel out. We'll leave it. We'll leave the mistake for YouTube to critique. Be nice to me, YouTube. All right, example four. I make it sound like there's a whole bunch of people that watch it. I, pro I literally average five views a week. So, you know, and it's probably like five of them are probably, it's probably you guys, you know? So, oh, man. If you want to, miss. You guys should consider subscribing if you want. Or you don't have <laughs> I'm not streaming right now, but uh, now that you're listening to me, if you want to subscribe and then click on the bell to get instant notifications, okay, I'll stop. I'm not streaming. I'm not streaming. All right, here we go. What if, oh, by the way, um, the SAT level math one subject exam is no longer available, which is kind of sad news because I thought we were pretty good at this. I'm not even kidding. They, or at least I saw this in a practice workbook. I didn't see this on a real SAT because obviously I can't see one. But on a practice workbook, there was one of these. Convert angle 2.5 radians to degrees. Round to the nearest tenth. Huh? Uh, 200. Oh, well. I mean. All right, here we go. Ready, guys? Remember, I'm going to write 2.5 radians. 2.5 radians. And then if I want to convert this to degrees... I'm going to multiply this by 180 over pi. So 2.5 times 180 over pi. So not all of them are going to have a pi, right? So 2.5 times 180 over pi. Don't worry, I'll go back to it. And there it is, 143.239. 143.239. Put a degree symbol. Now they did say round to the nearest tenth. So because they say round to the nearest tenth, this is 143.2 degrees. Yay or nay? Well, I mean, okay. I, okay, no, rounding's cool, miss. But in engineering, when you, when you guys become engineers and medical doctors, I'm assuming, I don't know, because I didn't go to med school, but my, my, I have a degree in electrical engineering. And we would never round until the very end. And actually, even at the very end, we would, like, truncate. Uh, so and it, we make a big deal about, like, I think in physics, they make a big deal about significant figures. Like, significant figures all the way. But if you start doing sig figs from the very beginning, and that's an intermediate step, and you have, like, five or six steps, your answer is going to be very off by the time you get to the very end. So in engineering, they don't round anything. You just do the exact all the way. Store it in the calculator. All right, here we go. Sketch angles of power 3, 2 power 3, 4 power 3, 5 power 3, 11 power 6 in standard position and calculate the measure of each reference angle. All right. There were some of you yesterday in first and fifth period, I'm going to give you a handout right now, who did not like radians and they converted all the radians to degrees. Fine, you can do that. But right now, guys, is the time to get comfortable with radians because you're going to be dealing with radians probably all your life if you're going to be in the STEM world. 
if, especially if you're going to be electrical engineering, it's you're going to see it all the time. So I recommend try right now with radians if you can. Cool? So here we go. I'm going to do a little reference first. I'm going to do my x and y axis, and I'm just going to label. Zero. Notice I didn't put a degree symbol. The, uh, the positive y axis is pi over 2. The negative x axis is going to be pi. The negative uh, y axis is 3 pi over 2. And then the full revolution is 2 pi. If you want, if this helps, which it did yesterday, several of your peers, they thought this helped. Pi over 2 is the same thing as 0 0.5 pi. This is a whole pi. 3 pi over 2 is the same thing as 1.5 pi. And then, of course, 2 pi's. And for several of your peers, that helped. Pi over 3. That's the same thing as saying 1 third of pi is one-third pi, by the way, that in decimal is 0.33, repeating, going forever, is one-third pi between zero and half pi. Yes, so it's going to be in quadrant one. It doesn't have to be perfect. We already know that pi over 360 degrees, but no big deal. If you didn't know that, that's fine. Here's that angle. Theta equals pi over three. They want the reference. Theta r is equal to pi over three. Same deal as before. We're in quadrant one. In quadrant one, whatever that angle is, is going to be your reference angle as well. Are we okay with that? All right. Two pi over three. So now we're that's two thirds of a pi. Two thirds of a pi. In case you're wondering, is like zero point six six rolling keeps going forever with a pi on it. Is that between half a pi and a whole pi? Yeah. So what quadrant is that going to be in? Two. So here's quadrant two that angle is 2 pi over 3 and my reference this guy here in blue theta r is pi over 3 how'd you do that so fast Chav? look how close you are to a whole pi see that red line plus this blue rotation is a whole pi so 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 3 would give me a whole pi do you guys see that yeah 2 thirds plus 1 third is a whole all right let's go to the next one Four thirds pi. Four thirds pi, four over three, I think is like 1.33333 pi. 1.3333 pi is between one whole pi and 1.5 pi. Does that make sense? So you're going to be in what quadrant? The third quadrant. So here's me drawing the third quadrant or exaggerating it. Here's my ray. And this angle here is four pi over three. And again, my reference angle, theta r, is pi over 3. Chav, how'd you do that so fast? Relax. You could always use the old school methods. You could always just go, oh, well, I want to know what my reference angle is. You could always go for pi over 3 minus pi, common denominator, put a 3 in the top, put a 3 in the bottom, omg, 4 pi minus 3 pi is 1 pi, and you keep the denominator, pi over 3. Oh, that must be pi over 3. You could always just keep going old school. All right, last one. Uh, well, not the last one, but almost. 5 thirds pi, 5 pi over 3. That is 1.666666 pi. So that is between 1.5 and 2 whole pies, right? So it's going to be quadrant 4. So here's quadrant 4. Bam, there's my ray. There's that angle. That's theta equals 5 pi over 3. The reference angle again, you're pi over 3 away from a whole 2 pi. Yeah, 5 pi over 3 plus pi over 3, that would be 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. Are we okay? Last one. 11 pi over 6. I don't know, Chav. 11 divided by 6 is a number really close to 2, but not quite. 11 divided by 6. So let's see what that is. It's 1.833333 goes on forever with a pi next to it. That's between 1.5 pi and 2 whole pi. It's really close to the x-axis. So what quadrant am I in again? Fourth. Here I am, fourth quadrant. And I'm probably going to be closer to the x-axis than the y-axis, so I'm going to say like right there. 
and then that distance from here to here, that's going to be theta equals 11 pi over 3. Oh, over 6, sorry. And let's see, how close are we to 2 pi? Well, that 11 pi over 6, if I add, remember, so put your pencils down because I want you guys to take this in. If that 11 pi was 12 pi, 12 pi divided by 6 is 2 pi. Do you guys re agree? So then that means this right here that I'm doing in blue, that must be 1 6 of pi. It must. Because 11 pi over 6 plus 1 6 of pi is 2 whole pies. Now I'm getting hungry. I want pi. Does that all make sense, guys? All right, put that for good notes somewhere so you can make sure that you're doing it right. All right, here we go, guys. Last questions. All we're doing is converting degrees to radians, but we want a perfect radian. So I really should put uh, to put the word perfect right on top of, of radians. So that means in terms of pi, parentheses, in terms of pi. Or let me put the pi actual, the actual pi. All right, so here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna take the 495 degrees and I'm, multiply, I'm gonna multiply this by pi over 180. But because I want it in terms of pi, I'm just gonna type it into my calculator without that pi because then it's gonna calculate the decimal, right? I don't want that. So you're just gonna go 495 divided by 180 and then turn it into a fraction. So here we go. 495 divided by 180. And I do get 2.75 and I guess that's a perfect number and I guess you can do 2.75 pi, but it doesn't look right, a decimal with a pi like that. So push math, enter, enter, and it turns it into a fraction. Put the pi right next to the 11. So it's going to look like this. 11 pi over 4. Don't worry, I'm going to do it again. Ready? I'm going to do it a whole bunch of times. You see that 720? You guys probably don't even need a calculator for that because you know that's two revolutions. So if one revolution is 2 pi, then two revolutions must be 4 pi. But in case you didn't know that, here's what I'm doing again. I'm going to show you with the calculator. I just go 720 divided by 180, and I bet you that's going to be 4. Bam, look at that. 4, and then you just put a pi next to it. All right, see that 60? We already know. We've been working with 60 degrees so many times today. So without even thinking, you're hopefully by now you're like, 60 degrees, we've done it like two times, three times. That's uh, pi over 3. But look, multiply it by pi over 180. And even without a calculator, you can probably do this. 6 goes into 18 three times, so 60 must go into 180 three times. You see how we did it? But relax. Here's how you do it in the calculator. 60 divided by 180, and you're going to get a fraction, see that, or 0.333, to turn it into a fraction, you do this, you push math, enter, enter, and you get a one-third, put the pi next to the one, you see what I mean? All right, so let's go to 165, so 165 times pi over 180, so, so 165 divided by 180 turned into a fraction, 165 divided by 180, enter, math, fraction, enter. 11 pi over 12. E says 195, and I just noticed symmetry. Did you guys notice the symmetry? Chavez, what are you talking about? I can't read your mind. 180 minus 165 is 15, and 180 plus 15 is 195. Do you guys see that? So I bet you this has the same denominator, but instead of an 11, it's going to be a 13 pi. I don't know. I mean, I could be, I mean, I do know, but I could be wrong. Let's see. 195. I'm a, pretty confident that I'm not, though. But divided by 180. Enter. Math. Fraction. Enter. Yeah. 13 pi over 12. When I was talking about symmetry, I'm talking about the difference. The difference between 180 and 165 is 15. The difference between 195 and 180 is 15. 
So since I noticed the differences were 15 on both of them, that's how I knew the denominator was going to be the same. Just add 1 to the, okay. Uh, 120. So 120 times pi over 180. Let's see, 6 goes into 12 twice. 6 goes into 18 three times. So that's 2 pi over 3. How do we feel? Okay. So we have a handout. You can work in groups. And I will do some of the problems. Right now, if you guys, I'm going to do some of the odd ones. Oh, that's good. All right, here we go. Let me get this out of here. Save, and let's open up activity two. All right, you guys ready? First thing I would do before I even start, I would create a reference for myself. So I'm going to do an xy grid, and let's do the radians first. 0, 0 0.5 pi, pi, 1.5 pi, and 2 pi. If you want to do a more traditional, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, that's fine. And then another grid, 0 degrees. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. And I'm just going to use that as my reference to keep looking at it over and over. One fifth pi. That's going to be in what quadrant? One fifth is the same as 0 0.2. 0 0.2 pi. So I'm going to be in what quadrant? First. So here I am. I go to the first quadrant. And then I'm just going to go. It doesn't matter. As long as you're in the first quadrant, Here's my ray. This angle there has to be pi over 5. What do they want? Sketch the angle in thunder position. There it is. Mark the reference angle and find its measure. Okay, so this is my reference angle. They want me to mark it. So this is my theta r. So my theta r is equal to pi over 5. What do you guys think? All right, let's keep going. I'm going to do uh, not all the odd, but the majority of them. Number three, 6 pi over 15. Well, I know that 6 over 12 would have been 0.5. So 6 over 15 has to be a number smaller than 0.5, right? So I'm going to be in what quadrant again? Yeah, the first quadrant again. Exaggerate the first quadrant. Probably closer to, well, it doesn't matter. As long as you're in the first quadrant, you're good. There's my angle. 6 pi over 15, and they want me to mark my reference. It's going to be the same, theta r. Theta r equals 6 pi over 15. So, so far, we've done two questions that are the same. Are we still okay, guys? Look at number 5. 39 pi over 20. Oh, I don't know how to do that one, child. Okay. 39 divided by 20 is a number close to 2. Not quite two, but close. So look, 39 divided by 20. So you get 1.95 pi. 1.95 pi is going to be between 1.5 pi and two whole pies, right? So what quadrant am I in? Four. Probably really close to the x-axis. But it's okay. You don't have to draw it perfect. Probably really close to the x-axis. But it's okay, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this right there, that rotation in red, is 39 pi over 20. They want me to mark the reference angle. So here's my reference angle, theta r. And I'm going to tell it what that theta r is. How close are you to 2 pi? 1 20th of a pi. Pi over 20. Do you see how we did it? Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, number seven, I'll let you guys do that one. Number nine, I'll do that one for you. So 25 over 17, I don't know. Let's put it in the calculator, see what that is. So 25 divided by 17. 1.47. All right, so here's my grid for this one. Uh, notice that it's a negative. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw a normal grid for now, only because I want you guys to see it negative. Zero, 
negative 0 0.5 pi, negative 1 whole pi, negative 1.5 pi, and negative 2 pi. I went clockwise. Do you guys see that? So because I typed in my calculator, 25 divided by 17, I got 1.47. So you're really close to 1.5 pi, but negative. So that means I'm going to be, remember, you got to go clockwise from the positive x-axis. So what quadrant am I going to be in? Not the third, but the second, because I'm going clockwise. You're going like this, see? So you're going to be really close to the 1.5, but not quite. So that angle there is a negative 25 pi over 17. The most common mistake is that you guys do it with the y-axis. It's never with the y-axis. It's always with the x. Now I'm like, oh, how do I do that? Well, you can, do, you can just take away the negative now. You can go, well, I am at 25 pi over 17, and the x-axis negative is pi. So there it is, and then combine like terms, or uh, common denominator, sorry, com uh, common denominator, I said numerator. And then the difference between 25 and 17, 17, 8 and 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's 8 pi over 17. That's your reference. Theta r equals 8 pi over 17. That's probably the hardest one in there to be h. How do we feel? All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, I think you guys can figure out, like, number 8. So if you guys have questions with number 8, let me know. Uh, go to the back page. So I will do one more negative angle and then one positive angle. So let's look at letter number 15, 154. Initially, I mean, I hopefully by now you know, but no big deal, we're rookies. So I'm going to draw a regular scale because I don't know what quadrant I'm going to be in. Well, I do know, but I want to show you guys. And because it's negative, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sketch my scale here. Zero, negative 90 degrees negative 180 degrees, negative 270, and then a whole revolution, negative 360. So negative 154 is going to be in what quadrant? The third. You're going to go like this. Theta equals negative 154 degrees. Make sure to put the degree symbol. Your reference angle is this angle right here. Remember that it's never negative. So I'm just going to go 180 minus 154 because it's never negative anyways. Make life easy for yourself. Uh, let's see, 54, 64, 74. I want to say that's 26 degrees. So theta r is 26 degrees. Cool. One last one, number 13. 98 degrees, there used to be a band named 98 degrees back in the 90s. It's going to be quadrant 2. A little bit past the 90 degree mark, there it is. That is 98 degrees. My reference angle is always with the horizontal, so this guy. And I believe that is, what's 180 minus 98? 180, 82 degrees. 82 degrees. Subtract 100 and then add 2 to it. How do we feel? And yeah, that's it. That's all you're doing, guys. So do that over and over. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Do question 17, 18, 19, 20, like the example that we did with the 13. Uh, and yeah, everything else. You can work in groups. And yeah, check out everything we've done, guys. Have we been learning a lot? All right, let's get it done.